Okay, so in this video, I'm going to be talking about another video, which is about five years old now. So it's probably been done before, and the topic's probably old and tired, but for one, I just can't stop myself from arguing with people on the internet, but I also think that this issue is still relevant. And besides, it still was at the top of one of my search results, so I guess it's still being promoted and watched. So here it is. On his show, Bill Maher implied that all Muslims hold pernicious beliefs. That was his word, pernicious, which means have- Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you can watch the relevant clip of his show here on YouTube. In fact, I'll put a link in the description for your convenience. And in it, it's pretty clear what Maher meant. He meant that Islam, as a religion, teaches harmful things, and that a significant number of Muslims in the Muslim world follow these harmful teachings leading to harm. He was not saying all Muslims, or everyone in these countries, or even most Muslims, or most people in these countries. He wasn't condemning Muslims. Instead, he was talking about observable, verifiable, measurable fact about words written in books and the actions of people. Ben Affleck, who agreed to be on the show for some reason, said that Marr's statement was gross and racist because he thought Marr was implying that Muslims have a harmful effect, that they are dangerous or evil. You know, it's, it's funny, it's really funny, really ironic that uh, Affleck said this exact thing right after Sam Harris said this. Well, I mean, the, the, the crucial point of confusion is that, that we have been sold this meme of Islamophobia, where every criticism of the doctrine of Islam gets conflated with bigotry toward Muslims as people. Right. And that is uh, it's, it's intellectually <laughs> ridiculous. So even it gets so really, really, yes, I'm not denying not, that, that certain people are bigoted against Muslims as people, that, right. and that's a that's problem. big of you. And he knows that there are over 1.6 billion Muslims in the world, and that generalizing about a large group of people is racist and gross, which it is. Okay, let's get the obvious out of the way. Islam is not a race, and this guy is a dumbass for not realizing that. And that's a large part of the issue here, that this guy can't seem to differentiate between the people in these areas and the ideas that they hold. We're talking about one of these things more than the other, and you can still like Muslim people, but not like some harmful things that they may or may not believe in. But okay, let's not generalize, all right? According to the Pew Research Center in 2013, sorry, I couldn't find any more recent data. What was it? 56% of Middle Eastern and North African Muslims supported executing those who leave Islam, and 76% of South Asian Muslims supported it as well. When it comes to women's rights, which, you know, here in the West we do enjoy our women's rights, 87% of Middle Eastern and North African Muslims, 88% of South Asian Muslims, 93% of Southeast Asian Muslims, 70% of Central Asian Muslims, and 43% of European Muslims believe that a wife must always obey her husband in her private life. So much for gender equality. The majority of Muslims in Egypt, Iran, Palestine, Pakistan, what else was there? Afghanistan and Malaysia supported stoning as a punishment for adultery. Homosexuality is punishable by prison or in some places even death in the majority of the Muslim world. This includes Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Iran, Libya, Sudan, Algeria, Mauritania, Morocco, Tunisia, Chad, Somalia, Bangladesh, Guinea, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, and so on. Now you could potentially call some of those things human rights violations, and they seem to be inspired by Islam. And these aren't the only things going on either, just ask a number of international organizations. But Marr didn't back down from his argument because there is violence and evil in the Muslim world, and he does believe that organized religion is pernicious. 
Again, completely ignoring the actual point that he made on the show. He was saying that a significant number of Muslims in the Muslim world held these dangerous beliefs. And he even specifically pointed out the example of 90% of Egyptians saying that they supported the death penalty for leaving Islam. I mean, that, that number is actually wrong, but it is at least a simple majority, or was back then. His point, his real point, was that the number of Muslims who support violence was not an outlier. And you may have caught that if you were actually paying attention to what he was saying. He argues that the Quran does say some very outdated and potentially dangerous things about how people should be treated. Teachings that are proven to have a harmful effect when interpreted by ISIS or Al-Qaeda, who are Islamic groups that, Mar would argue, share a lot of the same beliefs as everyday regular Muslims. Therefore, all Muslims have a lot of the same beliefs as ISIS. Which is true, and terribly misleading. Um, no, it's actually you who's being terribly misleading right now. <laughs> Mar wasn't even the one to bring up radical groups. Instead, that was, what was it, Nicholas Kristoff. Yeah, Nicholas Kristoff and then Ben Affleck, who were arguing with him, and both of whom you are just parroting right now, well, five years ago. Both Mar and Sam Harris were indeed talking about the everyday Muslim in the Muslim world. In fact, they spent quite a deal of time trying to explain that they weren't talking about just ISIS or such extremist groups. But evidently, it fell on deaf ears. Aslan argues that Muslims who distance themselves from the extremist elements of the Muslim community by claiming that those extremists are not real Muslims are denying that religious violence has a religious motive. And it obviously does. So, Mar is right. Islam is a part of this. So it seems like he kind of gets it. He almost understands that a religion can incite and promote religious violence. But he only relegates that to extremist groups. It's not just extremist groups. It's not just terrorism or militant groups or holy wars, or, or these sorts of things. It's also discrimination against women, beating women, honor killings, <laughs> imprisoning gays, killing gays, the massive oppression against those who just don't believe Islam, and those who seriously want to kill those who leave Islam. It's not, you know, just small groups of Muslims here and there who believe these things. It's about half of these Muslims, depending on which belief you're talking about. Some support more of these beliefs than others. But Mar is also wrong because, and I quote, Islam doesn't promote violence or peace. Islam is just a religion, and like every religion in the world, it depends on what you bring to it. End quote. <laughs> okay, okay, I understand. You know, violent tendencies and even bigotry can sprout outside of a religion, even if you are religious. The thing is, Islam doesn't really do anything to stop it. Imagine for a second that you have violent tendencies already, and then you convert to Islam. Islam isn't going to do much to stop you. And in fact, it can't without being inconsistent, because Islam was spread in large part by conquests, some of which Muhammad was directly involved in. And sure, I know somebody can tell me in the comments that the Quran says to you be your religion and to me mine, and that there's no compulsion in religion, um, but we, we have really mixed messages. Well, for one, the Quran says that Allah is loving and merciful, but it also says that God does not love non-believers and that he will show them no mercy. He will, he will torture them forever, infinitely. So you kind of get the idea that you can be, you know, merciful, loving, and good without being merciful, loving, and good to those guys over there. And it also says in one part that you should slay the idolaters where you find them. So there's that. Compare that then to a person with violent tendencies converting to Buddhism. 
I would wager to say that they are far less likely to be violent, or they would be much less violent, because, well, Buddhism teaches nonviolence. That's 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 a big part of many forms of Buddhism. So if you find yourself talking about the pernicious effects of Islam, you should really be talking about the pernicious effects of ISIS or Al-Qaeda, not Islam itself. We are not talking about ISIS or Al-Qaeda. We're not. Don't act like Islam has no harmful effects. Because it does. Maybe not all Muslims, maybe not most Muslims, but quite a lot of Muslims. We are not just talking about the actions of extremist groups. That is definitely an issue, but for example, there's a lot of domestic violence in majority Muslim countries. A lot of beatings that gay people face. There's an issue there. You can't deny that. Because Muslims are a large group of people defined by their following of Islam but they are also many different groups and cultures. Saudi Arabian Muslims are different than Turkish Muslims, and Turkish Muslims are different than Indonesian Muslims, all different than militant jihadist Muslims. Okay, sure, those whole countries are not militant groups. I know that, I understand that. Nobody was saying that they were, so you're kind of arguing against a straw man here. But do you know what all those countries have in common? Well, what do Saudi Arabia, Turkey, and Indonesia have in common. Yes, they're majority Muslim. Okay, smartass. But they also have pretty high rates of domestic violence. They're discriminatory against women in general. They discriminate pretty strongly against LGBT people. Oh, and these countries have a bit of a tendency to torture people. There are serious human rights issues in the Muslim world outside of these extremist groups. So let's not talk about Muslims in general terms, let's talk about them individually, by the name of their exact group. ISIS oppresses women. Turkey in 1993 elected a woman as their prime minister. That sort of thing. I can't, you know what? He's right. He is right. Turkey did elect a woman as a prime minister once. But as I'm sure you can imagine, the representation of women in Turkish politics is really low. And Turkish women still face, you know, domestic violence, forced marriages, there's honor killings every now and then. Th those, those do happen. And can you guess why these sorts of things are happening? Can you guess? I'll, I'll give you three guesses. In fact, I'll even give you a hint. It's the same reason why, despite gay marriage being perfectly legal in Turkey, Gay people in Turkey are still victims of discrimination, beatings, and the constant threat of murder. Have you figured out the reason yet? Oh, but no, Turkey is so progressive. I, he says that we're talking about Muslims in general terms. And, I mean, I guess that's true, because, you know, not... Every Muslim man beats his wife, but in certain areas of the world, which are majority Muslim, it's way too common. That's a very general statement, but that doesn't make it false. I'm not talking about ISIS here. I don't have an issue with Muslims, or even Islam, necessarily. You could follow the Quran pretty closely and be a decent person and be respectful to everyone. The moderate Muslims do exist and that, that's very admirable. My intention and presumably their intentions were not to say that Islam is completely bad, can never be good. My intention is to bring attention to the terrible things that are going on in some areas of the world. You know, in Saudi Arabia, Women can't really go anywhere without a man by her side. There have been women before who have fled the country in search for asylum. But the thing is, the Arabian government has ties with, you know, airlines and stuff, and they can hold their passports even after they've left the country and forcefully bring them back into the country where they are probably either imprisoned for the rest of their lives or killed. These are serious human rights violations in Saudi Arabia. And it happens. 
I have issue with that. And that is not ISIS. That is not an extremist group. That is a major world government. In Iran, homosexuality is punishable by death, and that law is indeed enforced. That's the sort of issues I'm talking about. And that is not a militant group. That's a government of a country. And perhaps this issue could be talked about in a better way. But nothing's going to get done if we can't talk about serious issues in large parts of the world without somebody saying, not all Muslims, not all Muslims, not everybody is like ISIS, you know. We are well aware. But that's not our only concern. I'd like to take this opportunity to say that this video has no chance of being monetized. And, you know, perhaps rightfully so. But if you think that it's important that people like me speak out against issues like this, then please support people like me who talk about issues like this. You can support me on Patreon if you want to do a monthly thing. You can support me via a one-time donation via PayPal. I should have the link in the description. I accept BAT for those of you who use the Brave browser and know what that is, but if you have no money, that's fine. Feel free to share this with people who you think would care. But when, when you want to talk about the treatment of women and homosexuals and free thinkers and, and public intellectuals in the Muslim world, uh, I would argue that li liberals have failed us. And